Throughout time, many have taught about the man named Jesus Christ, and countless ministries have taught that he is the only begotten Son of God. Some men do it honestly through the pages of Scripture, and others teach another Jesus. 2 Corinthians 11 verses 3 to 4 But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. One of the most recognized and celebrated preachers of the 20th century is Billy Graham, a man that reached millions of people and taught of Jesus. But the question is, which one? In this segment, we will be demonstrating through a series of clips and resources to see if the Jesus that Graham taught was in accordance to the Holy Bible, the final authority for all matters of faith and practice. Without any more delay, let's begin. Here is part of Graham's interview with Larry King on CNN on June 16th, 2005. But what about those faiths, the Mormons and the others that you mentioned, believe in Christ? They believe they will meet Christ. What about those like the Jews, the Muslims, who don't believe as That's you believe? That's in God's hands. I can't be the judge. You don't judge them? No. No, How I don't do you say feel you're when going to hell. And you're, well, I don't. How do you feel when you see a lot of these strong Christian leaders go on television and say, you are condemned. You will live in hell if you do not accept Jesus Christ. And they, they are forceful and judgmental. Well, uh, they have a right to say that. And they are, they are true to a certain extent. But I don't, that's not my calling. My calling is to preach the love of God and the forgiveness of God and the fact that he does forgive us. That's what the cross is all about, what the resurrection is all about. That's the gospel. And you can get off on all kinds of different side trails. And uh, when I, in my earlier ministry, I did the same. But as I got older, I guess I became more mellow <laughs> and uh, more forgiving and more loving. And In this moment, Billy Graham ignores basic biblical teachings for the sake of being perceived as tolerant. This, however, cost many from actually hearing the true gospel, where Jesus explicitly said, For if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. And I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God's love for mankind was shown in paying for the sins of the world with his blood despite our lost and defective nature. God allows salvation and an escape from eternal damnation only through faith in Christ. God manifest in the flesh. That is the love of God, not the damnable false sentimentality of Graham. Here is a clip of Billy Graham's interview with David Frost in 1997. Why is Islam the fastest growing religion in the world? I don't know the answer to that, but I, I can give some my own theories. I think one is the tremendous discipline that they have in, in Islam in the sense that uh, there's a judgment of if you do wrong and there's the tremendous uh, hope uh, that uh, people have if you are uh, Islamic suppose you die on a battlefield fighting for Islam the promises they give you for the first thousand years would make any young man say well I think that's what I'd like to have they, they have so many things and I think Islam is misunderstood too because uh, 
Muhammad had a great respect for Jesus, and he called Jesus the greatest of the prophets except himself. And I think that uh, we're closer to Islam than we really uh, think we are. Muhammad had no respect for the real Jesus, along with any professing Muslim today. Jesus said, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Which are contained in the scriptures that the Quran says the Christians even possess, turning every Mohammedan who denies this fact into a lying hypocrite. Billy Graham asserts that we are closer to Islam than Christians believe, a statement that is repeated by Muhammad in Surah 5 verse 82 for mostly Catholic priests and monks, not real Christianity. As the same verse condemns the seed of Abraham, the Jews. Christians and Muslims do not worship the same God, and Billy Graham would know that if he was a saved man. The next interview we will be looking at is with William F. Buckley Jr., recorded on June 12, 1969. Here, we will go over two separate clips that show the moral failure of America's most popular preacher, including his views on abortion and his views on the most basic doctrines of scripture. Let's show the first clip. But, um, for example, I was asked the other night about abortion. And uh, I said, well, I think that if you're going to have abortion, free abortion, as some are advocating, that why don't you wait till the baby's born and then kill it, mm -hmm. uh, rather than uh, have the, the mother's health impaired by the abortion. Well, this was a different thought, you see. And, uh, of course, I do believe in abortion uh, for those who've been raped. Uh, for those who uh, may be diseased to the point that the child will be affected. I think there are certain areas that we need some of our laws brought up to date. There are some of these areas, Mr. Buckley, in which the Bible does not specifically say. For example, I believe smoking is bad for you, but the Bible doesn't mention smoking, you see. These are situations that I have to form ethical and moral judgments. At what point is man allowed to play God? Imagine if you had someone beside you who was the product of rape, or was born on a particular failure on the parent's side. Would this give society the right to end a person's life because you've perceived them to be an inconvenience to society and maybe to themselves? Think about it. Here is a man who is supposed to teach about God, while thinking he can make judgments without God's word allowing something like this. Now on for the next clip. In, Dr. Graham, in connection with, uh, with that, what do you think the, is the role of uh, uh, ecumenism? I have two specific uh, data in mind, both, both of them involving yourself. Uh, on, the, uh, on your right wing, so to speak, among the, the fundamentalist of Bob Jones University, which you briefly attended, uh, I understand that when Mr. Bob Jones uh, uh, died, you were informed that they did not wish you to send a representative to the funeral uh, on another wing, at least organizationally. The Catholic Church uh, counseled its uh, priests uh, to give sermons on the uh, essence of the Catholic faith during the same period that you were preaching here a few years ago. Now, how would you relate those two phenomena, if at all, to the problems of Christian understanding? Well, I think we must understand, first of all, I would like to take the second illustration first. Uh, Pope John had not yet appeared on the scene. There's a total different attitude on the part of Roman Catholic uh, leadership today uh, toward uh, me and my work and toward uh, the Protestants in general. Is this price fixing? <laughs> no, no, I think it's good. I think we have dialogue, we have understanding, and uh, there are many uh, Roman Catholic seminary students that write me and say we have prayer meetings for you and your work. They attend our crusades, many priests come. 
I can uh, now have uh, complete uh, fellowship with uh, Roman Catholic people and there are no barriers that existed uh, ten years ago. I think all of that is to the good. Uh, the second illustration is that we must, under, uh, the first illustration, that we must understand that within Protestantism, uh, as in Roman Catholic, uh, uh, in the Roman Catholic Church. We have an extreme right wing, we have an extreme left wing, mm -hmm. and we have a big center. I identify myself uh, theologically to the right, but in my fellowship in the center. Mm -hmm. And uh, I fellowship uh, with uh, anyone who calls himself a Christian, and uh, I don't uh, pretend to give everybody that I meet a theological examination to see if you dot every I and cross every T before I have uh, fellowship with you. Well, but, but would, you, would you grant that it is extremely important uh, to define dogma and that the dogmas that are slurred over uh, at one particular point in history might be precisely the ones that become extremely important at another oh, very point in history? Oh, uh, very important. Uh, if I were compromising, for example, in my preaching, in my public ministry, mm -hmm. to the point that I was... Uh, saying that, uh, that Christ uh, may be the Son of God, that the Bible may be the Word of God, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I would consider that uh, a compromise. But I'm standing up night after night and saying the Bible is the Word of God. Jesus was the virgin-born Son of God. I believe that He bodily was raised from the dead. I believe He's personally, literally, coming back to this earth to set up His kingdom. And that's where the world is ultimately headed toward utopia, with Christ as the ruler. I believe in all of this with all my heart. Mm -hmm. But there are many Christians, true believers, that don't accept all of this. They don't accept every point. Well, I'm not going to deny them fellowship while in a debate or in a theological conference. I might stand up and, uh, and as gently as I could try to persuade them uh, that they were wrong. Just a reminder, Billy Graham said that he still considers a person saved if they believe the Bible isn't the Word of God, that Jesus was not born of a virgin and not the begotten Son of God, that he was not resurrected, and that Jesus will not have a millennial reign as king on this earth. The question is, who wouldn't Billy Graham consider saved? Jesus said, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. One final factor to consider concerning this interview was his pride in worshipping and working together with Roman Catholics, even recognizing them as true believers. His soft stance on Romanism is not to be misinterpreted as we will read an excerpt from his publication, Just As I Am. He would also call on the local Catholic bishop or other clerics to acquaint them with crusade plans and invite them to the meetings. They would usually appoint a priest to attend and report back. This was years before Vatican's II openness to Protestants. But we were concerned to let the Catholic bishop see that my goal was not to get people to leave their church. Rather, I wanted them to commit their lives to Christ. For Catholicism and the Vatican, God explicitly tells his people to come out of her. In Revelation 18 verse 4, as chapters 17 and 18 clearly and definitively condemn the Vatican and the Roman Catholic system, which was a belief that all of the most prominent early Protestants shared. The fact that Graham would do this would be the spiritual equivalent of Jesus telling someone to be a fisher of men, only to throw them back in the water once they've caught them. There is one final aspect to consider when it comes to Billy Graham. Let's move on to our final observation. For those who are aware of the secret fraternity of Freemasonry, it should be noted that there is compelling evidence to conclude that Graham was indeed of this organization. 
While not getting into the inner workings of Masonry, it is apparent that it is an organization that focuses on esotericism, secrecy, but most notably its inclusion and recognition of all religions. Recognizing any god as valid, which is problematic for any professing Christian. As it says in 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? With all of the sentiments that Graham expressed as documented in this segment, you can see how Graham's theology would have been consistent with that of the fraternity. However, there was a record that was given from an ex-initiate of Freemasonry, Jim Shaw, in the book The Deadly Deception, published in 1988, who gave his testimony after leaving the fraternity to follow Jesus Christ saying that during his initiation into the 33rd degree, Graham had attended this ceremony as a 33rd degree Freemason himself. Later editions of this book had removed Graham's name entirely, even though, afterwards, in interviews, Shaw would reveal that it was Graham who he was referencing. However, Considering the political and social influence of masonry, it really shouldn't be any surprise. Visually, however, we can see Graham demonstrating Masonic gestures that are common among those of the craft. Take, for instance, the handshake he shares with Harry Truman in this photo, a noted Freemason, and how Graham goes to grasp the knuckle of Truman. According to Scotch Rite Masonry Illustrated, as found on page 494, you can see that this is what is referenced to as the grip of a fellow craft. For one more public example, Graham had devoted an entire day in Romania to preach for Pentecostals, Roman Catholics, and even Orthodox Jews. As he spoke to those of the Pentecostal assembly, he reached into his coat when talking about the corruption of the heart. What he was doing was demonstrating the Masonic sign of the Master of the Second Veil, as demonstrated in Richardson's Monitor of Freemasonry on page 74. To paraphrase an old expression, if he walks like a Mason and talks like a Mason, he's probably a Mason. Graham's emphasis on ecumenicism and misplaced tolerance has hindered the message of the gospel for millions. While attempting to discourage faith in the authorized version of the scriptures to replace with versions that come from the Vatican, leading millions into spiritual fornication with the whore of Babylon along with a spiritually twisted theology that has kept many from hearing the true gospel. Consider the warning that Paul the Apostle wrote in 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 to 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. The world might cherish the legacy of Graham, but our Lord has called us not to be of this world. As 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 shows that the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. If Billy Graham taught a Jesus that was compatible with the lost world, what Jesus was Billy Graham preaching? Was it the true Jesus, or was it another Jesus?